On the afternoon of June 26, 2008, a loud scream is heard in a building of a local business in Doraville, Georgia. There was a group of employees in a conference room who ran to see where the scream had come from. They discovered an open office door, and when they looked inside of that office, they saw a female coworker lying on the ground with a butcher knife lodged into her neck. She appeared to be deceased. That employee was 31-year-old Carrie Harris. Carrie was originally from Memphis, Tennessee. Carrie was a very intelligent young lady. She graduated with honors from Kirby High School. She received a full academic scholarship to attend Alabama A&M University, where she received her bachelor's degree in food science. Carrie went on to complete her master's degree in business administration from Mercer University in Atlanta, Georgia. While pursuing her master's degree, she was also working as a quality control manager at a food processing lab called Cargill. In May 2006, when Carrie first started working at Cargill, she found her coworkers to be very friendly and welcoming. There was even a male coworker named Craig Armstead who baked her a cake as a welcoming gift. Carrie's personal life was also blossoming. She was currently in a relationship with a man named Max McCullough. They knew each other from college, but they recently reconnected through mutual friends. Carrie and Max were considering marriage, but Carrie wanted to finish her master's degree and get her career on track before taking that next step. Unfortunately, those big dreams were stolen from Carrie on June 26, 2008. While at work, Carrie had been experiencing some strange things. First, Carrie noticed that many of the items in her office had been moved around, but she did not become extremely alarmed by that. In February of 2007, one night while Carrie was driving home after work, she was talking to her brother Jason on the phone, which she normally did, and she noticed a car that appeared to be following her. She told her brother that the car went everywhere she went. It took every turn she took. Jason told her to drive on well-lit streets. He also told her to find the nearest police station and to pull over into their parking lot. Carrie followed his instructions and drove to a police station. The car that was following her did not pull into the parking lot behind her. Instead, the car drove past. A few days later, on February 3rd, 2007, while Carrie was attempting to leave work, her car wouldn't start. Fortunately, one of her coworkers was there in the parking lot and he offered to help. That coworker was Craig Armstead. He looked under the hood of her car and told her that a cable was disconnected from the battery. He reconnected the cable, instructed her to try to start the car, and the car started. Carrie and Craig worked for the same company, but they worked in different buildings. Shortly after that incident, Craig bought Carrie flowers. She refused those flowers. Carrie was very close to her brother Jason and she was keeping him informed of the strange things Craig was doing. In March of 2007, Craig bought Carrie a pair of stud earrings for her 30th birthday. Carrie refused that gift, and she told Craig that she was not interested in dating someone from work. Carrie expressed to her brother that Craig seemed to always be around. She told Jason she felt that Craig was spying on her. In May 2007, Carrie went to the Human Resources Department and filed a complaint against Craig. Craig was given strict and direct instructions from HR. Craig was told that he cannot have any direct contact with Carrie. He was instructed to only contact Carrie through the company provided email, and he was only able to contact her for work related purposes. A few days after Carrie filed her complaint, a co-worker invited her out for drinks. Carrie had previously expressed to this co-worker the strange behavior Craig was displaying. Carrie's co-worker told her that she did some research on Craig and found out some really scary information. She told Carrie that Craig had committed a murder years ago in New Jersey. Sadly, that information was very true. In 1992, Craig pled guilty to manslaughter by reason of legal insanity 
for beating his ex-girlfriend to death with a hammer after she broke up with him. One night in December 1990, Craig followed his ex-girlfriend, who was named Paula May, home from work and attacked her. He then attempted to conceal her body in a shallow grave. He was sentenced to 10 years in prison, but he only served five years. Then, in 1999, after he was released and had moved to Georgia, he was convicted of a felony peeping Tom charge. He was sentenced to one year in prison, but he only served three months. Carrie did not tell her brother Jason about the horrible things her co-worker told her about Craig. Instead, she confided in her close friend. Her friends searched Craig's background and found out those convictions were true. She urged Carrie to find another job, but Carrie refused. In June 2008, Craig gave Carrie a Palm Pilot, which is a very expensive digital organizer. He gave her that as a congratulatory gift for completing her master's degree and receiving a promotion at work. Carrie refused that gift as well. This time, she refused it in front of her other co-workers. The day before Carrie was murdered, she and a co-worker found a camera in the women's restroom. It was in a makeup bag that was placed inside a basket that the female employees used to store their feminine hygiene products. Carrie and her co-worker headed over to the human resources department to inform them of what they had found. But since it was already after 5 p.m., the office was closed. The next morning, a little after 9 a.m., Carrie and her co-worker went to the human resources department to express what they had found. The HR reps called the police immediately. When the police arrived, they viewed a portion of the images on the camera and found out that there was over 1,000 hours worth of footage currently on the camera. An investigation into who had planted the camera had began, and in less than an hour, Carrie was dead. The detective spoke to Carrie's boyfriend, Max, a few hours after Carrie was murdered. Max expressed that he was at work in Atlanta and he had nothing to do with it. He then told the detectives that Carrie told him about a strange co-worker. He said that he did not know the man's name, but Carrie called him the cake man. Detectives also spoke to Carrie's brother, Jason, later that same day. After the detectives told him the news about his sister, Jason immediately said, Craig did it. The detectives asked who was Craig and what was his last name. Jason explained that he didn't know Craig's last name, but Carrie often called him the cake man. Jason told the detectives about all the strange events that Carrie was experiencing at work. He also told them that Carrie filed a complaint with HR against Craig. The next day, the detectives went to Carrie's job and spoke with HR. HR informed them of who Craig was and the complaints Carrie made against him. The detectives also requested to see the video surveillance from the day of the murder. They were hoping to retrace Carrie's steps. Fortunately, the surveillance footage gave them a good clue as to who could have committed the crime. The footage shows Carrie entering the building where HR's office is located a little after 9 a.m. The footage shows that she was holding the makeup bag that contained the camera. The HR office was located in the building that Craig worked in. The surveillance footage also shows that moments after Carrie enters the building, Craig walks right past her. The footage shows that while Carrie was inside the HR office, Craig was lingering around the area. The footage also shows that a few minutes after Carrie and her co-worker leave the building, Craig also leaves the building. The surveillance footage from Carrie's building shows Craig walking into a break room and moments later, he exits the break room 
with the knife in his hand. After viewing the footage and speaking with HR about the complaints Kerry filed, the detectives concluded that there was more than enough evidence to justify an arrest warrant. The following day, detectives went back to Cargill to pick up Craig, but they found out that Craig did not come to work that morning. There was a be on the lookout notice sent to all the local police officers for Craig and his registered vehicle. Shortly after the notice was sent out, Craig was arrested about a mile away from his job. Back at the police station, Craig immediately confessed to killing his boss, who he said was a man named Bill. The detectives reached out to Bill and found out that Bill was unharmed and completely fine. The detectives continued to question him without specifically saying anything about Carrie. Craig was asked, did he kill anyone else? And he spoke about what he did in New Jersey. Craig told the detectives that he's tried everything to control his violent urges. He said the only things that kept him from hurting others was baking cakes and spying on people. Craig explained to the detectives that he placed a camera in the ladies' restroom at his job in the mornings, and he would come get the camera every evening before he left work. Craig told the detectives that he killed Bill because Bill was mean and he constantly teased him about a female co-worker. The detectives decided to inform Craig that Carrie was the person who was dead. Craig became very distraught after the detectives informed him that Carrie was dead. Craig did not completely take responsibility for the crime. Instead, he said, Frank did it. He explained to the detectives that Frank was a person who lived inside of him. At that time, Craig was then charged with the murder of Carrie Harris. On August 16th, 2008, the trial began and Craig entered an insanity plea. Craig's lawyer argued that Craig suffered from intermittent psychosis. And at that time, he believed that Carrie was a bad person and she had to be eliminated. After the trial was over and the jury deliberated, they chose to reject Craig's insanity defense. Craig was convicted of murder, aggravated assault, possession of a weapon during the commission of a crime, and 18 different counts of unlawful eavesdropping and surveillance. Craig was sentenced to life in prison with an additional 60 years. Carrie's family sued the company Cargill for damages. The claim was settled out of court for an undisclosed amount.